The British Broadcasting Corporation presents radio's only card game, Dealing with Daniels. And to conjure it all up for you is the man himself, Paul Daniels. How, you may ask, can four people play cards on a radio show? I'll try to tell you. I'm using a short pack, having discarded all the twos, the threes, the fours, the fives, and the sixes. And I'm the only one who can see the pack because each card's got a question on it. Now, the club cards are potluck questions. Hearts are near to everyone's heart. It's all about food and drink. On every spade is a bit of a verse, and the player has to sing a bit of the chorus. Note that players sing. Uh, diamonds are murder, literally. They're all questions about murder. The inventor, Ian Messeter, not a million miles away from my left elbow, says that part of the object of the game is to confuse the players. <laughs> and it's confusing me. Now, they can't remember which cards are being called. There are three players and four suits, which have to be called in strict rotation. So you see, it's not easy when you remember that the same card cannot be called twice, because if it is called twice, that happens. And the player who did it gets fined. So let me present to you at home those who are about to become penalised. They are, reading from left to right, unless your stereo speakers are back to front, Patrick Moore, Michelle Dutrice and Dougie Brown. Welcome, players, and let me tell you that the questions on cards 7 to 10 inclusive are worth one point each. The royal cards, Jack and King, are, they're worth two points, and the aces, well, as you well know, they're almost impossible, so they're worth three points. Just before the show, we cut another pack of cards, and Michelle won with a diamond. So, Michelle, choose one of those so I can read out the question written on it. Eight. Eight. Starting with a nice low diamond. What was the relationship between Crippen and the woman he murdered? <laughs> That's why he murdered her. Yes, yes, I can understand that, but... Um, no, I, I think it was uh, his wife, wasn't it? That's wasn't right. Wasn't her name Belle? Uh, yes, that's it. You broke your duck. You got a point. <laughs> Mrs. Crippen got, got popped off. So it was husband and wife, and you started that with one point, going round to Dougie, of course, who is sitting there smiling. He's going to pick a club. Right. Uh, not in the northeast. No. <laughs> bring, him, bring him back the tears to your I'll, eyes. I'll try the ten, the ten of clubs. The ten of clubs? Yes, please. The ten of clubs is coming out now. If they all stood shoulder to shoulder, what proportion of the world's population could be contained by the Isle of Wight? One percent. Point not one percent. Uh, not quite. It's actually one hundred percent. All of it. The whole population of the world, shoulder to shoulder, could stand on the Isle of Wight. There we are. Well, be, that's all right, because there'd be a lot of places to birdle in China, wouldn't there? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I think last summer, I think I went over there once, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, we come to you, Patrick, we come to you, and you're on hearts. Yes, um, I'm a heart. Very well. Um, I'll be bold, shall I? Uh, nine. Nine of hearts. Nine. A milk pipeline runs from Ameland, or Ameland, to Holland, ten miles away, carrying 12,000 gallons of milk a day. What happens if it's pumped too fast? I would say the cows in Emmerland get awfully thin. <laughs> and, um, and is that right, or...? No, no. No, it isn't. No. But I would say then, probably, uh, the milk would turn to something... I don't very like myself very much, uh, um, yoghurt or something like that. Well, I'll give you that. It turns to butter, in fact. It well, turns yes, to same butter. thing. Close to yoghurt. Same next, thing, yes. Next door but one, yes. yes. So we go to uh, Michelle Latrice on spades. An eight. The eight of spades says... Oh, this is, of course, our song bit, you know. Now, the, you've got the first of the song bits. Now, it starts... <laughs> I'm not allowed to tell you the first bit. It's a clue. Mm. I've been blue since I've been away from you. I can't wait till I get going. Even now, I'm starting to call... Oh... Oh... <laughs> you beautiful doll, you great big beautiful doll. No. no. <laughs> No, it's California. Here I come, right back oh. where oh. I started from, which in your case was a club in the northeast. <laughs> yes. No, we move on, of course, to Dougie with diamonds. Oh, the king, on oh, the king of diamonds, the king of diamonds for Dougie. And this is, of course, for two points. James Cam 
All right? Yes. C-A-M-B. Both James Cam, convicted of the murder of a girl on the Durban Castle, and John George Haig, convicted of the murder of Mrs. Duran Deacon, had the same mistaken idea about murder. What was it? This is very strange, because this is one of the questions I don't know the answer to. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you give me the answer that you don't I know? I think the answer was... Uh, is some, uh, they thought that they could dissolve the bodies in acid. Yes, it was, because the guy who, who tried to uh, kill his wife in an acid bath and he lost his arm pulling the plug out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, <laughs> I think they both found out that you can't get away with it. <laughs> well, all of that adds up to a little truth. I'm going to give you one point, in fact, for that. Because yes. um, they both believed, wrongly, that unless the body is found, there can be no conviction for murder, you see. Now, oh. Oh. Oh, oh, hello. <laughs> hello. The Dougie Brown playing for Sympathy Bait, on which his whole career has been based. <laughs> now we move to... Well, he's never course. been playing for money, anyway. <laughs> um, what should I have? Um, uh, Knave, or Jack, if you like. What's the sound of rum? Baba. 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 My father loves them, you know. No, do you really know what's, what's the sound of rum? Well, it's something to do with Egan Mook. And I can't really do that. I think the sound Eag of rum... And... Eag and muck. Rum, eag and muck. You've the, heard them on the weather yeah, forecast. The, well, I'm going to... I'm, I'm actually going to give you two points for that. It's the channel between the Scottish islands of rum and eag. Now, it's hearts. I'm going to be bold and I'm going to go for an ace. Well, it isn't one. For three points. What's a bubbly jock? <laughs> Taxi! <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's a, a Scotsman... Um, who's drowned in a lot of soda water. No, I, no, I, no, I, I think it's, it must be a, it must be a, a whiskey and, and champagne cocktail. Very close. It is, in fact, a turkey. So we will go on. <laughs> Speaking of turkeys, Dougie, it's your turn again and we're on spades. Yes, I think I'll take the king of spades, please. The king of spades. Excellent. Dougie. That's me. Correct. Two points. <laughs> but I adore you, yeah. so strong for you. Why go on stalling? I'm falling. Love is calling. Why be shy? Carolina Moon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, one of those keys. It's actually, let's fall in love. Why should we? Let's fall in love. Are yes. you going to give me a point if I sing No, I you? meant the tune. <laughs> <laughs> I was too late. Sorry. Too Pat. late. Now, we move on, of course, from Dougie to uh, Patrick Moore, who is on Diamond. Uh, hmm. Diamond. King, I think. Oh. Now, that means that the King of Diamonds has gone, and you get a minus two because it was a royal card. Well, I'll but try the seven, then. Okay. Seven is coming up. Very well. Who is supposed to have murdered the princes in the tower during 1483? Well, if the gentleman named Richard III was meant to have murdered them, and I gather that now the Richard III society is probably not true. It's almost certainly Henry IV or V, I forget which, because princes in the tower had been put there by order of Richard III to protect them from the throne, and the Earl of Warwick came along, and it's said that Richard III actually went into there and strangled them. Yeah. But nowadays, of course, this is regarded as entirely wrong, yeah. because these days the historians have got hold of the entire story, yeah. and that they believe now that Richard III wasn't even a hunchback. He wasn't yeah. probably wasn't there at all. Yeah. So the answer is that probably it is Richard III, but at the same time, though, we can't claim it as being definite, yeah. so there's no real answer to that question. And everybody who was mentioned just then were, uh, stood shoulder to shoulder on the Isle of Wight. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got Richard III on here, so I'm giving you the point whether you agree with it or not. So, you <laughs> Michelle Dutrice, you are on clubs, honey. Eight. The eight of clubs, yes. Now then, I want you to listen to this very carefully and tell me it's a sound effect and tell me what you think it is. Here it comes. <laughs> Well, I don't know, but he keeps phoning me up all the time. <laughs> it sounds a bit like my mother on New Year's Eve, actually. Um, <laughs> You'll be Jimmy sorry. Trying trying to kick, his, kick start his train. <laughs> yes. No, it, it, it's obviously some machine of some sort, and, and, and it, it, is it something to do with milking? A milking machine badly fitted to the teats. <laughs> Very good. Amazing. Was the was the lady Dolly Parton? Was 
No, if you remember, Michelle did say it sounded like her mother at Christmas. Yeah, I don't know. I, the, the brain boggles. And we move on to Dougie and Dougie's on hearts. The ten. The ten is still here. Why are coffee beans not beans? There has beans. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I would like to know what they has beans when they were not beans. Uh, there are seeds, aren't they? Seeds. As, in, as in tennis. <laughs> tennis seeds. Well, because I know that John McEnroe is going to be signed up by that coffee firm to join Gareth Hunt, Una Stubbs. And, and he should be stoned, shouldn't he? Yes. Yes. Give You're right, point. they are stones. Give... Now they are of a red <laughs> cherry coloured fruit. I'm going to give you a point for that. Right, let's move on to Patrick and Spades. Um, nine, please. The nine of spades. Now, this is a song, of course. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Patrick is now gargling and we go to Though old years turn to new My heart keeps calling you I I am this um, particularly rapid and intelligible chatter doesn't it really be heard if it doesn't matter 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 <laughs> Subtitles can be found on page 170 of C-Bikes <laughs> It says here, I wonder why you keep me waiting. Charming. 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 Uh, charming. 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 charming, isn't it? Yeah, charming. So we move from spades to diamonds and Michelle de Tries. Queen. Queen of diamonds is still here. What was the name of the girl who tried to escape with Dr. Crippen after the murder of his wife? Wasn't that Ethel mm. Lenev? Very Ethel good. Ethel, Ethel Lenev is the name well, of the lady. Well, a good one. Good one. And we move on to Dougie and clubs. Clubs, I will take the seven of clubs, please. Still with us. Does a true Highlander wear his sporran under or over his kilt? It depends if it's his turn for the round. <laughs> I, I'm going to dread it, but why? <laughs> well, because he enjoys his feeling for the small change. <laughs> I just thought of that. It's quite good, wasn't it? <laughs> and also, it's a very hairy spot. <laughs> <laughs> That'll tickle your fancy. What about... What was that again? Uh, did he wear it over or under his kilt? I think that's a trick question because I don't believe... You know the difference between a Scotsman and a coconut? No, well, what is the difference between a chocolate? You can get a drink out of coconut, can't you? Oh. <laughs> no, I don't think that um, a true Highlander Scotsman w has a sporum. Well, no, actually, it's got on here part of what you've already said. He wears he it over his kilt. Patrick, and he's on hearts. Put a drink, um... King. The king? King. Sure. What colour do some supermarkets use to illuminate the meat to make it look more appetising? Absolutely anything. They couldn't make it look less appetising. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, on the whole, probably a uh, pale green with yellow flecks. <laughs> no, that's the cheese. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I would say probably um, uh, infrared or something like that, or ultraviolet or something. No, it's actually pink. Well, see, that um, is infrared. Uh, well, no. Infrared is pinker than pink. I'll get three points. Is it? <laughs> no, no. When you're playing snooker, if you're infrared, it's only one point. <laughs> it's six points. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the six points. So we move on to Michelle and Spades. Seven. Not a soul to tell our troubles to. And when it's twelve o'clock, we climb the stair, we never knock, because nobody's there, just... Me and my shadow, all alone and feeling blue. There will be a silver collection after <laughs> <laughs> You got it right, you got it right. Aided there by the Luton Girls Choir. And we now move on to Dougie Brown, who has also been aided by the Luton Girls Choir, and he picks diamonds. Diamonds are murder, so I'm going to take diamonds. I think I shall take... Uh, I'll probably try for the one with the uh, Jack. <laughs> the Jack is still here, lucky old you. What was the surname of the man convicted of the series of murders known as the Brides in the Bath? I'll tell you what it was. Cleverly. George... Cle something cleverly. No, it's closer to that name you use when you're going to hotels. Smith. Smith, that's right. John Joseph Smith. <laughs> the gentleman with two points. Mr. Dougie Brown. 
how well I know you. And we move to clubs, and we move to Patrick. Uh, um, uh, nine, please. The nine of clubs is still here. If you're standing on the side of a hill, when a bull starts to chase you, which is the best way to run? I think Away should... from the bull, ready fast. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at Patrick, you should address that question to the bull. <laughs> I think the extra answer is uphill, isn't it? No, that's the wrong way. Downhill. Well, downhill. I mean, wait a minute. If, 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 if the bull is running uphill, you run downhill. So the answer's right. <laughs> it doesn't say which way the bull's running. It says if it starts to chase you. It well, entirely bull... depends which way the bull is running, whether you run uphill or downhill. Well, that's the whole well point you of my circle question. round the bull, and then you head off down the hill because its front legs are shorter than the back, and this makes it difficult for them to run My downhill. front legs are not shorter than my back legs. Why should you Personally, I think that's a lot of bull. Do you? Oh. <laughs> and we go to Michelle de Tries, and she's going to pick a heart. Um, I'm going seven again. I'm going low. Seven of hearts. Some Mohammedans say that the eating of what will produce a thousand good works. The eating of a thousand oysters. You should be so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, there must be a gag there, but I don't think I'll bother. No. <laughs> um, dates. No. Melon. Back to the oysters. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's melon. Melon? Oh, I was on a date last night. I had a dozen oysters and only four worked. <laughs> and we moved to Dougie and he's on spades. Queen of spades, please. Queen of Spades. She ran to the man who had led her so far astray, and from under her velvet gown she drew a gun and shot her lover down, madam. Madam, Mr. Otis regrets she's unable to dine lunch today. <laughs> Getting madam. clues from all over the room. Mr. Otis, Otis regrets. Yes, he even managed to pick up Miss Otis on the second version. Yes. You're right, Miss Otis regrets she's unable to lunch today for two points. Right. And we move on to Patrick. Now, Patrick's on diamonds. Um, murder. ten, please. Ten? Edith Thompson was convicted of the murder of her husband in 1922, but who killed him? Uh, Mr. Bywater. Spot on. Her lover, Frederick Bywater's did <laughs> kill. Good answer. Michelle Dupree. You're on clubs. Um, I I'll go ten. Ten of clubs. <laughs> Oh. Now, that means, of course, that you've lost a point. Now, don't worry too much about these minor scores coming in, because you have got a joker and you can play it later in the game, but that's why all the studio clocks have been covered up, so you don't know how late in the game it is. <laughs> <laughs> Clever, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it's me again. Oh, right, yes, I'm going to go for uh, an ace. The ace of clubs is still here. To the nearest minute, how long does it take a giraffe to run a mile? <laughs> uh, I'd say two minutes. Which is exactly right. To the nearest minute. How long does it take a giraffe to run a mile? Two minutes. That's spot on. <laughs> Real yeah. Three points. Follow that, Dougie Brown. Follow that. I'm on hearts. Hearts of food and drink. Then, in that case, I shall take the uh, king of hearts, please. The king of hearts. You lose two points. Okay. Well, in that case, I will try a different heart. The nine. The nine of hearts. You lose another point. <laughs> well. Hmm. I will try it then uh, the um, this um, sir, eight, the eight of hearts. It's still here. Oh, oh! I've cracked it. <laughs> Within ten tons either way, how much food does the average person eat in a lifetime? <laughs> oh, here we go. We're back to the Isle of Wight again now. <laughs> uh, I will say uh, fifty-five tons. No, we did say within ten tons either way, and it's actually seventy tons. Oh, I was five tons off. I was on a diet that week. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd have trouble with you. Uh, Patrick Moore, spades. Oh dear, spades again. Seven. Seven. Now, where's the seven gone? Nine. Oh. Nine. Eight. And that's your three goals. <laughs> so, tiddle, tiddle, tiddle. Michelle, yes. you are on spades. A nine? Nine of spades. <laughs> You've lost one. <gasps> um... Ace? Ace of spades, going for the hard one. The master came down, there were tears in his eyes, and he tried hard to smile as he said... There's trouble at mill. <laughs> ah, castle. Does your chewing gum lose its flavour? Does your chewing gum lose its flavour? Tell if I wanted what? Not the tele <laughs> Not telephone, telephone wanted. wanted. No. <laughs> 
Dinner for one, please, Jane. Jane. Madam will Madam not be will dining. Go. That's Look the one. I don't think I was he assisted so a bit there. So that was two points for Michelle and one for Dougie. <laughs> <laughs> Shouting in her ear. Anyway, this is... We move on, of course, to Dougie, who's on diamonds. You should have tried the Queen of Diamonds? Queen of Diamonds. <laughs> or perhaps instead, <laughs> I will try the ten, please. Or perhaps the... Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, now I shall... Um, all those courses have gone, so I shall try something different. I will try the seven, please. The seven. That's your three goals up. We move along to Patrick, who is now Terms, five, by the way. Um, King, what's the meaning of hors de combat? Hors de combat? Um, <laughs> well, it can mean, uh, of course, a very old horse, but um, mean actually uh, rather out of action. Like yes. Something like right. incapable of further fighting. In fact, it says on here, out of action. Yes, so action. spot on. It's Two points. Uh, We're going to move to Michelle and Hearts. Um, I'll Two. try nine. Nine? Oh, Last one. no, I won't then. Um, I'll try a queen. Hmm. How do you make Bloody Mary? <laughs> 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 I, I'll say it's uh, tomato juice and um, vodka. And that's... Two points. Very <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so now we move on to the inscrutable brown yes. and spades. Uh, spades are just song bits, so I think I, so at this conjuncture I will play my joker and get. How many? What can I have the, my score, please? Well, uh, so far you see you've got seven minuses and seven pluses. So if you t play your joker, now the joker gets rid of all those minuses for you, and you've got seven plus points. So you've now played your joker, you can't play it again. From now on, any minus points will be taken off your score, dear boy. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then, we're on song bits. Well, I'll try the, um, I'll try the uh, ace, please. The, the ace? The spades. <laughs> Three points. Go. The ten of spades, please. The ten of spades is still here. <laughs> is he excited? <laughs> <laughs> now I greet the day and complete the day with the sun in my heart. All my worry blew away when you taught me how to say... Good night, sweet auntie. Um, I don't know whether I can uh, give you a clue on this one. Um, I'm going to sit right down and write myself a... And <laughs> <laughs> no points. Wrong. What was it? It was grab your coat and get your hat, leave your worry on the doorstep. Oh, shame. Shame. <laughs> <laughs> so, now we move on. Who do we move to, Patrick? Diamond. Ace, please. Ace of diamonds. Yes. Straight into the top. What was odd about the last portrait painted of the son of Charles II, the Duke of Monmouth, who was executed in 1685? It was painted after he was dead, therefore he lacked a head. He well, was the, executed, you know. The, the I'm going to play, I'm going to, the stage, I'm going to play my joker. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> Funny place to play it. Anyway, you had five minuses and seven pluses. You now have seven pluses. Thank you. And I'm going to only give you two out of the uh, three possible points there because it was even gorier than that. After execution, someone thought his portrait should have been painted, so they sewed his head back on. Oh. And then they painted the picture. <laughs> oh. What it's sort a, of stitching did they use? I don't know. Overlock. And it was... It's <laughs> super glue. Super 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 it's, it's now in the National Gallery. Super <laughs> so there you go. If you want to get a head, get a painter. Right. <laughs> so now we move on, of course, to clubs and Michelle. Um, seven. The seven <laughs> has gone. You've lost a point. Um, queen. The queen is still here. Mm. Which duke was known as Conky? Conky. Conky. Well, wasn't it Wellington? Correct. And that's two points for Michelle de Treese. Dougie Brown, you're on hearts. Five of hearts. The five. We don't play the five. Just testing. We go down to the seven. Just testing. I should knock one off you anyway. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the ten of hearts. The ten of hearts. Uh, and the, then, in that, the uh, ace. The ace. Three points off you. So, what a lot of points you've lost and you've already played your joker. So, we move to spades and, of course, it's Patrick. Ten. Nine. Eight. Oh. <laughs> I'll name that tune in three. Oh. Okay. So, to be we got to be That hooter sounds better than Patrick singing, actually. <laughs> well, that could well be true, yes. <laughs> Michelle. Diamonds. Diamonds. Murder. I think I'll try an ace. Oh, I won't then. Um, seven. 
ten. Oh. Can I play my joker? Yes. Thank you. Why not, darling? Yes. You had nine minus points and 14 plus points. You're now 14, and the game continues with Dougie frantically trying to find a club. A club, right. I will take the, um, the ace of clubs, please. And then the jack. And the ten. And we go to Patrick Moore on heart. Seven. Pardon? Seven. Seven. Eight. Eight. Ten. Oh, very well. <laughs> Michelle, you're on space. Um, have they all gone? I think they've all gone. Now, you can make that claim. I must point that out to you. And if you're right, you get ten points added to your score. But if you're wrong, I'm going to subtract a point <laughs> for every card left in front of me. <laughs> now then, Michelle, do you want to declare that they've all gone or not? Man or mouse? I, I'm going to say they've gone. Well, I'm going to have to deduct a point <laughs> for all three of these cards that are still in front of me. So there you go. Oh, listen to that now. There's a thing. Now, that means time's up and we have to shuffle off. So here's the score. Everybody played their jokers, and that meant, of course, that uh, Patrick Moore had four solid points left at the end of the game. Dougie Brown, in his own inimitable style, had minus seven points left at the end of the game. And Michelle Dutrice was the winner with 11 points. So it's goodbye till next time, next week, when I hope you'll pull up a chair and we'll have another game. Goodbye for now. That was Paul Daniels playing radio's only card game dealing with Daniels and doing their best to deal with him were Patrick Moore, Dougie Brown and Michelle Detrice. The pack was devised, shuffled and scribbled on by Ian Messiter and was cut and produced by Richard Edis. Uh -huh.